welcome. My name's Alan. Uh, this is my tiny house. Actually, to be quite honest, it's my second tiny house. So a little bit about myself. I'm a farm boy from the Midwest. Grew up in Nebraska and that instilled some ideologies. Uh, we had a small house and a lot of people in it. That was kind of my first experience with living tiny. Kind of what, what uh, brought me to the tiny house movement, I had a change in my life experience. I uh, had a divorce and that made me kind of rethink things. Things that I didn't need anymore, things I didn't want anymore. Uh, totally could simplify my life. I'm not necessarily a minimalist, but that line of thought is, is very prevalent uh, to those who want to go tiny. I, I kind of did the normal thing after the divorce. I had a, a two bedroom house, kind of did all of that. Uh, and then in 2008, uh, everybody knows that the economical situation kind of went south. The company that I was working for at the time uh, closed their doors. And that meant I had to find a new job. But I was living in a community where work was difficult to find. And so when I was finally offered a job out of state, I moved out of state to uh, secure that employment. But all the time I'm thinking, I couldn't afford an apartment in the new town and I still had a mortgage in the other town, so I had to do a sale, because I couldn't do both. Uh, and it ended up being a short sale. And the only people that made money off of that was the mortgage company and the investor. And so I lost money, because generally when you buy a house, you go into it thinking, okay, the house is going to appreciate, and you are gonna have that as an investment, and you're gonna be able to sell it and make a profit. Turns out it didn't work that way for me. That put a really bad taste in my mouth. I didn't want to give other people an opportunity to make money off of my misfortune. Uh, and I thought, well, how can I resolve these situations? And one of the thoughts that started going through my mind was if I had my own property that I could pay for in cash and a house that I could pay for in cash. And how can I do that? Well, one is to go smaller because a smaller house is less expensive. And if I did most of the work myself, Obviously, I would be saving in the labor costs there. And I do have some experience in construction uh, that I, well, grew up on a farm. So we did a lot of things ourselves to be self-sufficient. This is uh, my second tiny home, as I said earlier, and it was built by Tumbleweed Tiny Homes. Uh, the dimensions are approximately 30 foot by uh, 8 foot 6. The parking situation, I'm here in Nevada, and I have uh, some great neighbors that uh, had an available spot. Uh, where there once was a uh, single wide trailer and so it has the septic system it had the water available had the electricity available uh, he was just looking for someone to occupy the spot since it was ready to go and then kind of care for the place so everything's worked out when he's gone doing his sailing and whatnot then i look after the place to make sure that everything's taken care of when you live tiny it's, it's very important to have a place uh, where you can entertain guests and family what i've done is i've kind of created an outdoor space where i can relax uh, and be outside. I have had up to four people inside for dinner and a movie night, but hey, it's tight. You, you gotta be real good friends because you're sitting right next to them. The patio is basically the whole length of the house. So it's about 12 foot from this edge to that edge, uh, allowing plenty of ample seating space. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a table uh, for entertaining and then just a place to relax. And to be honest with you, I find myself sitting here more often than any other place and uh, just listening to the birds and watching the sun go down in the evening uh, and you know it's just a relaxing thing to do. So right now I would like to invite you into the house and so that you can get a look for yourself kind of what it's like to live tiny so let's come on. Well all right we're here so this is my house. Right now I'm in the uh, living room, uh, the lounge, and the entire house is about 210 square feet. Uh, that does not include the loft. So in my living room, a couple of things that I had uh, done to customize it for me uh, was I knew I was gonna get this size of a TV because basically it's the biggest TV that you could put against this wall. But I had a little nook created up there so that I could have all of the components like the cable box and the DVR and, and all of that stuff. 
and then the sound bar goes beneath it. So I tried to get all the measurements kind of equal so that uh, it was pleasing to the eye. Everything was symmetrical. Uh, so anyway, what it does is it allows me to like put some baubles up there as well, some knickknacks and things like that. A place to show stuff off. So, and then of course you have to utilize your spaces in multiple different ways. This is actually my dining table. And uh, thus far, I can comfortably sit two people uh, in here for uh, meals and whatnot. I haven't had uh, more than that in this particular space, but I'm pretty sure if we pull it against uh, away from the wall a little bit, that we could have someone sit on the couch. I can comfortably feed three people here at a time. Uh, maybe even four, haven't tried it. One day, maybe we will. You have to make use of all the space in a tiny house. There's uh, some nooks and crannies. So uh, in most of the tumbleweed tiny homes, they have a front loft such as this. Even in the one I built, I had a front loft pretty much similar to that, and I used it for storage. So all the little day-to-day -day things, uh, you know, books, DVDs, uh, CDs, things like that, I store up there. Of course, when the cat is bad, that gets pulled down and she gets a little squirt once in a while. Thanks to our video sponsor, Kamikoto. Oh, hey there. Do you have a reason to cut big food into small food? Well, then you need Kamikoto knife. Kamikoto makes great Japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from Japan, part of the 800 year plus legacy of Japanese technology and expertise in creating the steel that makes these handcrafted knives. Each knife is individually inspected. Kamikoto is so confident about their knives that each knife comes with its own lifetime guarantee. Keep your knives in tip-top shape by maintaining the edge of the blade with one of Kamikoto's sharpening whetstones. From the moment I opened Ooh. the box, I could tell that these were uh -huh. serious knives. And it feels amazing too, well-balanced and extremely sharp. Cutting through a thick slab of meat is like cutting through butter. Each knife comes in a beautiful heavy-duty ashwood box for safe storing. Kamikoto has a big New Year sale going on right now and is offering an extra $50 off of any purchase you make with the discount code THE. There's a link in the description. Man runs on meat. So I've already got some bacon going right here for some guests that I'm having over for dinner tonight. We're gonna have bacon burgers, I guess. Someone mentioned Jay Schaefer and how he was on Oprah. And I don't remember whether, I, I think I YouTubed it and I caught that interview that he did with Oprah and I'm like, wow, this guy's really thinking. And he had some of the same thoughts and mentalities that I had. He was verbalizing them and I had only been thinking about them. But that kind of motivated me. I had the great, great fortune of the company that I was working for, allowed me space in their warehouse. Uh, so that I can construct my project. So every week I would get paid, I'd take myself down to the lumber store, and I would purchase 50 bucks, 100 bucks worth of lumber and materials, and then I would spend the weekend doing a bit and a piece at a time of the tiny home. So this started in 2010, and I was living in it by 2013. I haven't turned back since. Uh, it worked for me. Uh, I knew someone that had a, uh, an RV park uh, that I had rented an apartment from them before that had an available space in it. Offered him some money for me to put my RV there. Said it was very economical for me, so my housing costs were roughly $200 a month. So that allowed me to actually put money in the bank so that I could start purchasing things with cash, which I, I think is the best way to go. This is my kitchen. This is actually an RV stove, but it works really, really well for me. I can still get a turkey in there, a turkey breast. Did that with a couple of friends a couple of weeks ago. We kind of did a pre-Thanksgiving dinner, so we had, you know, mashed potatoes, uh, green bean casserole. Anyway, um, it works pretty good for me. And then I've got a microwave. Uh, this is a convection oven microwave combination. In order to utilize space, uh, you have to be thinking about things and, and how to better utilize them. And I noticed one thing, that there's a little bit of dead space behind the stove. And I thought, wow, what a great place if I just put a slot to store my knives. So 
I just took a, a skill saw and made a cut and then cleaned the edges out with a drill uh, so that I could drop my knives in there and they're, they're handy. I don't have to go into the drawers fishing around for them. Uh, they're right there when I need them. And so for me, uh, storage is pretty important. I actually realized I'm a bit of a dry uh, food hoarder. Uh, so I've got like tons of pasta, tons of lentils and, and legumes, uh, things of that nature. And I'm one of those people that I don't want pests in my house. And so I want to, at all costs, avoid uh, enticing pests to come in the house. So instead of leaving things in their original packaging, uh, I've opted to put them all in mason jars where they're sealed up tight. Uh, one, they're gonna last longer as well. Um, and I just, well, it looks kinda cool too because you get the colors. Uh, you can put the colorful stuff up front and it just adds a little more um, interest uh, to the kitchen. So I've chosen to do that. I don't need a whole lot of dishes and things like that. So basically, almost 90% of my dishes are right here. Very easy to uh, wash them and then put them right where they belong. Uh, I have one closet in the house. Um, this is my closet where I have all my clothing. Again, when you live tiny, you kind of got to minimize. So I've had to actually donate some shirts and some pants that I really wasn't wearing anymore. Uh, they were perfectly good, uh, so I did send them, I donated them, and uh, slimmed down my, uh, my clothing to what I really need. So, you know, I've got uh, enough shirts for me. Uh, I got my work shirts and things like that. And, well, to be honest with you, everybody's got a skeleton in the closet. I'm no different. There's Dusty, my skeleton in the closet. We're actually working right now because uh, some of that bacon looks like it might be ready. All right, so uh, some of the other things that I've done to utilize my space more efficiently uh, is one, I got my uh, wine glass holder down here. It's where I hang my cups, uh, my measuring cups and things like that. Because there was so much space between the two shelves, I thought, wow, you know, I can get more storage space if I had kind of something in the interim. Uh, so this is just a little bamboo dish rack shelf thing, uh, which works out really great. I mean, you can see that I've pretty much got all my dishes there. Another thing that I uh, wanted to do, I only have one drawer, uh, which has basically my silverware in it and some other things that I need on a daily basis. But as you can see, that's already pretty full. But yet I have utensils that I need to uh, use in my cooking and things like that. So I opted to uh, hang them above the window. I have put my uh, spices in jars and use the uh, metal of the refrigerator. There's magnets behind the, the lids. Uh, so that I can have them, one, very, very available where I can read what the spice is. I don't have to go rummaging through some kind of cupboard or uh, something like that. Uh, but this works out really great for me. I mean, I really, really like that. So it keeps everything handy. I opted for the bigger sink because I do my vegetable cleaning and things like that. And it's just, it's nicer to have a bigger sink to work with that. And some of the pots and pans that I've got are a little on the larger side. And again, you got to go vertical with your storage. So instead of uh, putting pots and pans in the oven for storage, uh, I opted to uh, put a pan rack. And as you can see, I kind of did it for my own height. So if I have a guest here that's uh, six foot uh, three or six foot four, they'll probably be banging their head on that. But it's customized to my uh, needs, not somebody else's. This is on a trailer. Trailers have wheels. Wheels mean you have a wheel well. Uh, so behind this counter here are where my tires are and it's kind of a bump up and a bump out but what that has done is it's also made me raise my refrigerator uh, so my refrigerator isn't so low to the ground and for me that's great because I can open it up and instead of reaching all the way down here for my vegetables they're kind of more at a, 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 a easier place for me to grab so uh, for me that's an advantage and then another advantage, I am getting older, I hate to say it, but uh, my other tiny house, I had a ladder. And getting up and down that ladder was uh, starting to get difficult. So I actually opted to have stairs put in here. And what that uh, does is it makes it a little easier for me to get in and out of the loft. Uh, I have food storage up here and here. Uh, this is where I put my trash and a couple of other things. But this is the winner right here. Uh, washing machine and dryer. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing my linen today. They're, they're smaller, and I like that. Uh, you don't have to take your uh, laundry out of the washing machine and then put it in the dryer. It's all one unit. 
Uh, this one is uh, vented, so it takes all of that warm, moist air and pushes it outside. Uh, for me, it works out really well. It does take a while longer though, uh, longer than a normal uh, washing machine and dryer, and it's limited to about 12 pounds of uh, laundry. Uh, it does that pretty well. Anyway, I'm going to take you upstairs really quick, but I, I have a little bit of room here where I do store my folding chairs that I use for the dining room table. Uh, so they're kind of out of the way here and uh, don't cause any problem. So let's go on upstairs and uh, see how that fits. We're up here in the loft and as you can see I've got enough uh, head height uh, that I'm not really hitting, uh, hitting the ceiling there. Uh, so I find it very comfortable. It's, it's very cozy. I've got plenty of windows up here. For safety reasons uh, this is an escape window, so it's actually designed that if there's a problem, you can actually escape and get out of the house uh, through that window. You've got a couple of shelves, uh, uh, and then, uh, and uh, yeah, it's really comfortable. My kitty spends quite a bit of time up here. Uh, she really loves the windows. She'll sit in the uh, window and just uh, look out over her domain and uh, see what's scampering about. Of course, you don't have enough room for a bed frame. So, but you want to have ventilation. Uh, I have a memory foam mattress, and they always say that you should have ventilation underneath your mattresses. Uh, so what I did was I installed a system to continually have uh, airflow underneath the mattress. Uh, this will extend the life of the mattress, keeps uh, condensation or anything like that from affecting your mattress. Well, they're actually they're for floors, so you'll go into like a public pool and you'll have the little squares like in the shower room uh, and that's pretty much what they are. I, I don't remember what they call them. You know, like 12 by 12 squares and they clip together and I bought just enough to uh, cover the room for the, the mattress. Uh, so I have a standard, just you can find it anywhere, kind of a, a cubby hole shelving thing. And so I've got some additional clothing and some linen and things like that uh, that I tuck in here out of the way. So my first house, I did all the work myself. Not exactly sure, thinking I spent 13000 Some of the items I got were used, uh, so I repurposed some items. But that's pretty close to what I, I put into it. Well, yeah, I upgraded just a little bit. I actually purchased this one through Tumbleweed Tiny Homes because I do like their designs. They've been at it for a long time. I modeled my first house after Tumbleweed Tiny Homes, so I, I just kind of went with it. Uh, part of it has to do with their certifications and, and all of that. I thought that was very important. My other tiny home, I tried to get insurance on it, but I couldn't because it was self-built. Uh, that's an issue because we do have uh, 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 fires around here from time to time, and that, that's my biggest fear, is, is losing a house to a fire or something like that. So I thought it was important to get a house that was certified so that I could get insurance on it. The one I'm living in now is, is about the same width as far as the dimension, but it's a 30 foot long. And part of the reason for the motivator, and I hate to say this, I did not have a washing machine and dryer, and I never planned for it because I just I didn't think it was that important uh, for my other tiny house. And as time goes on, uh, I think I lived in the other one for seven years, but I always took my laundry to the laundromat. And as time went on, that just became such a drag, and I couldn't stand it you can go to the Tumbleweed Tiny Homes and look at the prices yourself, uh, but it's pretty close to $100,000. Big difference, but I did not have the time, uh, nor did I have the luxuries that I had before with my tiny house as far as having a warehouse to build it in where I could do it over a long period of time and still have all the raw materials protected from the elements. Uh, so since I didn't have those things available to me, I outsourced them, and it costs you money. Let's face it, you got somebody else doing the work for you, you're going to pay for it. Uh, but you take the average typical price of a house in this area, it would be bigger because it would be standard stick-built house. Uh, however, for me, I don't need all of that extra space. This provides everything I need. Uh, but you would pay an average of $300,000. I'm one-third the cost of a, a traditional home. Uh, and for me, that's okay. So... When you're living in a tiny house, um, one of the things is, is you want to have good ventilation. Human beings, we exhale, we're putting moisture into the air, and you don't want to have a house that has too high of humidity. Uh, so in order to extract the humidity, uh, we have a, a Voltronic. What it does, it's a heat exchanger. Uh, so the air that's coming in 
is more conditioned so that um, it's more effective uh, and economical than just opening up a window. So uh, very important to have. Uh, like I said, you want to keep your, your house humidity at just the perfect level. And I do have a humidity meter uh, over here, uh, which tells me what the humidity level is. And as you can see, it's low humidity, uh, which is just about perfect. So, and I'm cooking, which puts off heat because propane actually puts moisture into the air, uh, along with uh, all the people in here and we're all breathing. But my system is doing a very good job of extracting all that humidity. Tiny home wouldn't be a tiny home if you didn't have a tiny bathroom. This is my tiny bathroom. It suits my purposes and needs. Got everything I need. I got a sink. I have a standard flush toilet. A lot of other folks have uh, opted for the uh, uh, composting toilets. Uh, however, I have always been connected to a sewer system or a septic system for every place that I have lived. And there's something to be said about a, a smaller toilet. Uh, the composting ones are, are pretty big. So I've tried to spruce this area up just a little bit. So you're going to see that the main theme is yellow. Uh, when you're in a bathroom, you're very uh, exposed. And I kind of wanted a warm place. Uh, and yellow puts off those tones of warm. Uh, so that's kind of why I went with that. Also, I've utilized some of the space. Got a great window here with a southern exposure. The plants really, really love it. Uh, they're doing rather well. And uh, I think every house needs some plants because we exhale carbon dioxide and plants take that in and then filter that and then put oxygen into the air. Uh, so I like to surround myself with some greenery. So standard shower, standard size shower. I've got some storage uh, underneath the sink uh, where I put, you know, you know, regular stuff that you would store in a bathroom. And then right here is kind of the heart of the house uh, because this is a twin temp water heater. So it's an on-demand water heater, but what it also does is in the winter time, it puts radiant heat around the edges of the house. Uh, so it will warm the house and warm the water. Uh, it's very efficient. Uh, and I got to tell you, I really like that kind of a system. I currently pay $325 a month. Uh, so that's my living expense. And I pay that for rent. But what I get is I get two acres and a hoop house. And so I now have a hoop house so I can extend uh, my growing season for my vegetables. And, you know, I like that because I like to eat organic. Uh, I think that's a healthier way to go. Kind of self-sufficient as well. For me, those, those are important. So I'm, I'm very pleased and happy. And, uh, well, the neighbors are great too. I mean, I've been here now for three years and I've had an opportunity to meet most of the neighbors in my area. And we exchange vegetables and other produce. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll just trade stuff up. Uh, a dozen cucumbers for a dozen eggs, that kind of a thing. You know, camaraderie as well. So uh, when the weather's decent, uh, we'll have cookouts. The neighbors will come over. Uh, we'll enjoy some hamburgers or steaks or something like that. And we do quite a bit of that. Yeah, well, and nobody wants to kick me out <laughs> at this point in time, so I'm all right with that. If you notice, there's two doors in the bathroom, uh, the one that's coming in and then the one that's going to the back room. Uh, so these are sliding doors, uh, pocket doors. And so you can, uh, you know, shut your, shut your uh, doors for your uh, bathroom. But it also leads to the back bedroom. Well, it's a utility room, really, because you can use it for multiple purposes. Uh, I've actually had a uh, desk installed so that I can use it as a home office. And when I have guests, though, we can actually set a cot up. We move things around a little bit, like the kitty uh, things and all of that. And we can have a cot right here so it can double as a guest bedroom. Well, I'm getting older. And so eventually it may come some point in time where I'm not going to want to climb the stairs and go to the loft. At that particular point in time, then I'll make a decision. They make like a Murphy bed that you can attach to the wall and they fold down. Uh, and then this will then become basically my bedroom. Uh, I'll still have the upstairs where guests can go. So, you know, it'll work out. Uh, but right now it's in kind of a, a way that I like. And as you can see, yeah, I got a few screens around here. I like to play video games and things like that. 
for one thing, I'm a simple guy. I don't need a whole lot of things. Uh, there are people who think that guy, by going and purchasing stuff, that that's going to make their lives happy and they're going to enjoy their life more. That's just not the case. Uh, we're brought up in this society as a consumer. You're missing the point. If you think that things are more important than what you can do with your time, with the people and your friends, then you've got it all wrong. I would rather spend my time and money with my friends uh, and family than purchasing another toaster or something like that. It allows me flexibility. So as jobs have changed, I haven't had to sell. I just towed my house with me and found a new place to put it. And I've had some fantastic places uh, that I've had the opportunity to be. Uh, one of them was Mount Charleston, very, very beautiful up Mount Charleston. So we were up about 9,000 feet and I was a camp host uh, up there for, for a year. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. You know, when you can get up in the morning and you look out your window and you've got a deer looking right back at you through your window. You know, that's kind of cool. Uh, when you wake up in the morning and you got five foot of snow on your house and everything's all fluffy and soft, that's kind of cool. Uh, so I really enjoyed that time that I was there. But the only reason I could do that is because I had the flexibility of a tiny home. Security is never guaranteed. If you can make yourself more self-sufficient and not reliant upon renting, uh, purchasing a new house with uh, a real estate agent or something like that, uh, you know, you, you, you simplify your life. And, and that's kind of what it's all about, in my opinion. And financially, I'm better off financially than I ever was in my entire life. Uh, that's another aspect. I, I, I pay less for housekeeping, for uh, repair and maintenance and things like that, living tiny, than you would if you had a full-size house. And so therefore, I actually have money in the bank. Uh, so if emergencies do come up, unlike most of Americans today who don't even have $500 in the bank uh, to cover emergencies, I've got that covered. So I don't have to worry about that kind of a thing. So I'm far better off now than I was in the past when I was living a standard life doing the standard things that standard Americans do. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.